Okay, so I want to do one more uh, example of a, of a binary operation, or a couple more examples of binary operations, um, since, uh, since we're looking at sets. Uh, one of the other things that you often see when you do a unit on sets, and we're not going to get into big detail on this, um, there, there's another way about thinking about you know, operations on sets where uh, the things that you're combining are other sets. So maybe we work with, let's say, um, uh, sets of sets. Right? And, and not all possible sets, but some of them. And so what we can do is, is you can do this. So you usually start with, say, um, some universal set. So... Um, so this, you know, universal in the sense of this is, I don't know, like your universe. It's all the things that you're going to consider. Um, we're going to go with, uh, with a simple example. Um, it's going to be the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? And we're going to define the following set. And I'm not going to list all the things that are in there, but we're going to do this. So S is going to be, um, is going to be the set... of subsets of U, okay? So, for example, the set, let's say, one, three, four, um, that is something which is in, sorry, not U, it's a subset of U, but that makes it an element of S. Um, don't worry if you, if you get mixed up on the usage between element and subset because lots of people do. That's something that trips up a lot of our Math 2000 students. And, you know, it's not something that will be a, a big concern for us. Uh, so that would be an element of S, uh, something like this. Um, that would not be an element of S because 7... 7 doesn't belong to U, so this isn't a subset of U, right? So the way something fails to be a subset, um, yes, 1 and 5 are in there, but if you have even one member of your set that doesn't belong to the larger set, then you don't have a subset. Being a subset means that everything in here is also in there. <coughs> so what are, <coughs> excuse me, what are some binary operations that we can define on a set of sets. Well, there are, there are two very common ones. There's what's called the union of a set. So you use this upside down U for, for union. And this is all the things in either A or B. Um, so what the union does is it t you give it two sets and, and it collects up all the things that are in either one of the sets and puts them together into a new sort of bigger set. So it's something that's going to include everything that's in A uh, and also everything that's in B. Um, so for example, If I had, let's say A was the set containing 1, 4, B is the set containing 2, 4, 6, and I wanted the union, so I take everything that's in A, so I take 1, I take 4, I also throw in everything that's in B, so 2, um, four, 4 shows up in both sets, uh, when you're writing down sets, when you're listing elements in sets, um, you don't worry about the order that you list them in, and if something shows up twice, it's the same as if it shows up once, so you probably don't bother repeating it. So you'd have one, two, four, six, right? So you put everything together into one big set. Um, one of the ways that you might picture this, and this is something that a lot of people will, will like to think about. Um, you can bring in these, uh, these sort of Venn diagrams, right? So the Venn diagram, in this case, you kind of have, say, 
A, and maybe you draw B. And if I wanted the union, well, that's everything that's in either A or B. And so maybe you think about kind of shading, or you can do this, right? So maybe I'll go around the outside. All right, so the union is, is everything, everything that's common to both. Um, the, the other operation that you can do is there's also something called an intersection. So the intersection is written this way, a sort of upside down U. You read this as A intersect B. And, and this is all the things uh, that are common uh, to both. Um, so if I, if I return to this example here, the intersection, I'm looking for all the things that belong to both sets simultaneously, right? And so unions always get bigger. Intersections generally get smaller because you throw away anything that the two sets don't have in common. Uh, and in fact, the only thing that they have in common is four. So you get a set containing just a single element of four, right? Um, if you wanted to think in terms of a, of a Venn diagram, if this again is B and and this is A. The intersection is where they overlap, right? So the intersection is, is in here. A intersect B, OK? Um, so these are also binary operations in the sense that you, you take two things as an input. In this case, the two things are sets. And you get another thing as an output. In this case, another set, right? And you'll notice if you're doing unions and intersections and you're working in this kind of scenario where you're working with subsets of some universal set, um, these um, operations stay inside the set. So this set of subsets is closed under both of these operations, union and intersection. Um, and so in Math 2000, you would see a lot of this. You'd work a lot with this. Um, you see a little bit of it as you move on. You'll talk about, you know, in like a... Um, algebra class or a pre-calculus class, you might talk about unions of intervals and things like that. Um, so just to give you another example of binary operations, we won't work very much with unions and intersections in this course, uh, but you might see them every now and then. Um, there might be times where you're doing some of these like Venn diagram exercises with your students. Um, they're, they're kind of a fun thing to play around with. Um, I, th I think it is worthwhile, I don't know what, what grade level it's appropriate to talk about sets, but I mean, they, they are really fundamental objects in mathematics, so I think it's, you know, it's good to start thinking about them early if, if you can. All right, um, so in the, uh, in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about properties that some of these operations have.